Welcome to the weekly news update here on Crypto TV Plus. It is the 3rd of March, 2023. I'm Nikhil These are the headlines. Supreme Court says all Naira notes remain valid. Bitcoin of America CEO arrested. HSBC bans crypto purchase with credit card. Crypto hedge fund finds new bank as Coinbase cut ties with Silvergate. U.S. lawmakers argue SEC accounting policy undermines safe crypto custody. Celsius custody customers finally begin withdrawals. Events packed for the month of March and more to come. Now to market rates today, Bitcoin is at $22,400, Ethereum is at $1,500, BNB is at $290, Solana is at $21, and the dollar to naira rate at $736. Now let's get you updated on the Crypto Weekly News. First up, the Supreme Court has nullified the ban on using the old 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira banknotes as legal tenders. The Apex Court gave this ruling on the 3rd of March, Friday, in an unanimous decision by a seven-member panel of justices. The panel, in its ruling, held that the old banknotes should remain valid legal tenders until the 31st of December. Similarly, the stipulations of the ruling also noted that the old notes would coexist with the new redesigned currencies already in circulation. While reading out its final decision on this case, the federal government was blamed for not allowing due processes before deciding on a Naira redesign and stopping the circulation of the old currencies. The Apex Court held that administrative bodies like the Council of States, the Federal Executive Council, the civil society, and other relevant stakeholders ought to have been notified before making the initial decision on the initial implementation of the new Naira redesign policy. Next up, law enforcement officials have arrested Sonny Maraban, CEO of Bitcoin of America, along with his father Reza Maraban and attorney William Soriano, on suspicion of money laundering and Ohio ADM licensing violations. Authorities also seized more than 50 Bitcoin ATMs in Ohio. Cryptocurrency is money, and if you are a money transmitter in Ohio, you need to have a license. Bitcoin of America does not have a license. Andrew Galski, Assistant Prosecutor, Chiyoga County, Ohio, said in a statement. Prosecutors claim scammers used Bitcoin ATMs as a middleman to get money from victims. Bitcoin of America allegedly received approximately 20% of the money from each transaction. Moving on, HSBC UK is clamping down on cryptocurrency transactions as the UK is intensifying its rules and regulations surrounding digital assets. Alongside Nationwide, HSBC will now ban any cryptocurrency purchases made by credit cards for retail customers with Nationwide, also applying limits of €5,000 per debit card, purchases of cryptocurrencies with the bank also outright banning purchases made via credit cards. HSBC cited warnings from the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, as the UK financial regulator has set about establishing new guidelines for crypto companies to follow in the country, warning them if there is a failure to comply, they would face time in prison. More interesting news as Silvergate Bank, a prominent lender to crypto firms, lost five partners earlier due to a slew of investigations and lawsuits against it. Coinbase, Paxos, Gemini, Bitstamp, and Galaxy Digital were some of the most notable crypto firms using Silvergate as their banking partner. However, the termination of service by Coinbase has also forced a crypto hedge fund to look for an alternative banking partner. On the 3rd of March, a crypto hedge fund called Digital Asset Capital Management DACM, with assets worth over $400 million, announced it was looking for a new banking partner in Switzerland post-Silvergate chaos. Then, two United States lawmakers have criticized crypto accounting guidelines outlined by the National Securities Regulator, arguing they place crypto customers at greater risk of loss. The guidelines came from the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and became effective in April last year. The guidelines ask financial companies holding crypto for customers to recognize all digital assets they do not control as a liability. They also state that digital assets should be backed by a safeguarding asset. However, Senator Cynthia Loomis and Representative Patrick McCarry argued earlier that these guidelines will likely discourage regulated entities 
from engaging in digital asset custody, which is the opposite effect of what the regulator should be doing. To close off the news today, some Celsius customers have reported being able to withdraw funds from the bankrupt cryptocurrency firm for the first time, some 263 days after the lender froze withdrawals in the lead up to its bankruptcy filing. As of March 2nd, certain customers who held funds in Celsius custody accounts have been overjoyed that they were finally able to withdraw their funds from the lender. Customers report they received an email a few weeks ago listing those who were eligible to remove their funds becoming res before receiving on March 2nd, noting withdrawals could be processed. While some users who whitelisted wallets ahead of the withdrawal attempt received their funds within minutes, others pointed out large delays. And that's it for the weekly news updates here on Crypto TV Plus. For more market updates and all the happenings captured in the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency, do visit our website, CryptoTVPlus.com. Also, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter as Crypto TV Plus, and on Instagram at Official Crypto TV Plus to get daily info on our programs. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification button as well. And just in case you have questions regarding any of our news at all, Join me in the comment section below. I'm Nikki Oshini. Thank you for watching. Until next time.